My nifty new place was looking good. Sure, I needed to organize the place, but adventure was calling. I wanted a shredder, and if I was going to build it, I would first need to scrounge up some iron. I was banking on a cave that I would already previously explored to have some. And so I began my harrowing journey to find iron by traversing the purple forest. A dangerous labyrinth that not even the most agile of rovers could hope to escape. No one could have avoided those trees and not flipped. No one. Fortunately, I was able to recover and continue on towards the mine with my pride intact and my courage sound. The alien structure that served as the cave's landmark filled me with an equal sense of awe and wonder. I had no idea what to do with it, but assumed it had something to do with some sort of Alien vs. Predator spinoff. Either way, I had to stay focused at the task at hand. Channeling years of driving experience, I bring my rover to a stop that would still rank me as one of the safest drivers in California and take a moment to admire my handiwork. Not too shabby. I decide rovers work best right side up before descending down into the cave, making sure to slide for style points. Unfortunately, I was so caught up sliding I missed the ramp and gave myself a boo-boo. I was hoping this wasn't an almond for what lied ahead. I had already had multiple accidents before this. As I explored deeper and deeper into the cave, I noticed shiny minerals in the distance. I'm known to get distracted by anything shiny and was drawn to it like a moth to a flame. I had no need of it. Backpack space was already limited and I had a job to do. But none of that stopped me from mindlessly collecting the minerals anyway. If there's one thing the crab and Moana taught me, it was the value of shiny objects. Using a few of the advanced math algorithms I learned in the fourth grade, I come up with a plan to make a standard, perfectly angled slope to the bottom. I only come to find, however, that math is bullshit and not at all effective in real-world applications. Thus, I fine-tune the angle so that I can finally use it and continue my journey. Using a few of the advanced math algorithms I learned in the fourth grade, I come up with a plan to make a standard, perfectly angled slope to the bottom. I only come to find, however, that math is bullshit and not at all effective in real-world applications. Thus, I fine-tune the angle so that I can finally use it and continue my journey. I decide to forego my usual caution when it comes to my oxygen supply and explore a bit further without my tether line, forgetting the ease in which I got lost. Sure enough, my latest case of cave panic sets in, as that's just what I've done. Reason fails me and my primal animal instincts kick in as I worriedly eye my oxygen tank and run around in a frenzied panic. It was like being lost in a grocery store to age three all over again. I eventually find my way, but the experience haunts me. With the trail of tellers behind me, I make my way to the cave's next section, once again distracted by shiny minerals. I knew quartz when I saw it, and figured some extra to make some glass would go a long way and collected some on my way through. My cave adventures were beginning to take a mental toll. I began asking myself some of life's biggest questions. Do aliens have nipples? What are the odds of a secret dinosaur society living within the Earth's crust? Was there even any iron down in this cave, or just a bunch of flowers I could research? I didn't have any answers for these questions, and the first strands of doubt began to skitter across my mind. I began to question the difference between a cave and a cavern, and wonder just which I was in. I needed to find my iron, and soon. Just when the monotony of the cave begins to overwhelm me, a strange wet farting noise is heard in the distance. I freeze in place and take stock of the situation, only to notice that the green gas is moving towards me. I come to find there's a farting plant of some kind trying to skunk me out and give it the business end of my gun. I come to a fork in the road and remember the old adage about sticking to the right to avoid being lost in a maze. Deciding no one accomplished great things by following old adages, I dart left to continue my voyage. Seeing nothing interesting ahead, 
I turn my attention to my side and see yet another way down deeper into the cave. Yet, as I explore further, I come to find that I'm only brought to yet another way to go down even deeper into the cave. I was expecting to hit bedrock by any second if I kept descending at this rate. My expedition almost takes a sudden and tragic end as I nearly smash right into two poison plants. Fortunately, I quickly recollect myself and take them out, no problem. As I reach the end of the tunnel, a sense of the sublime takes a hold of me. This was no cave, no cavern, but a whole underground network that I had barely scratched the surface of. I searched for a way down, trying to invent ways in which I could do so. Was it possible to simply create a slope in front of me while I walked? There didn't seem to be any way to do so. I weigh my options carefully and decide that it's not worth the risk with no evidence of any iron down there. No, I had come far enough for one day. It was time to turn back with what I had. Retracing my steps, I realized two things. How far I had come and the ridiculous amounts of tethers I had used. For my next cave adventure, I need to find a way to use much less. Hauling an old generator I had found in the cave by way of telekinesis, I ascend up into the fresh air of the alien world once again, much preferable to the dank dark cavern. I may not have found any iron, but I did get out alive, so I chalked up my victories and continued on. I take a joyride back to base by romping through the fields with my rover. It goes well, and despite all logic, I managed to get through the train without flipping even once. It took all day, but by nightfall, I happily reached my ramshackle base in one piece. Bringing my rover to a halt, I begin plans to unload my gear and begin my next expedition. But that's a story for another day.